Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of A Daughter's a Daughter by Agatha Christie. Writing as Mary Westmacott, this is one of the books that she wrote under a pseudonym. Uh, as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs before sharing my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, uh, Anne Prentice falls in love with Richard Caulfield and hopes for new happiness. Her only child, Sarah, cannot contemplate the idea of her mother marrying again and wrecks any chance of her remarriage. Resentment and jealousy corrode their relationship as each seeks relief in different directions. Um, are mother and daughter destined to be enemies for life, or will their undying love for each other finally win through? So these are kind of billed as romance novels, but I would argue they're more contemporary novels. It's just that they're contemporary novels from, you know, 80 odd years ago. But there, uh, there's some great lines in this, so sure there might not be Poirot or Miss Marple, but you do get some like great little life philosophy. So for example here, what did the French say? Partir, c'est mourir un peu. Uh, that means leaving is dying a bit. We get a line here which kind of... Uh, it's interesting looking back on this line after having read the novel. Daughters existed to serve their parents, not the other way about. And this novel kind of investigates the mother-daughter relationship in quite a lot of detail. So I thought this was an interesting little, little quote here. I don't mean anything physical, I'm talking in mental terms. Women are lucky, although 99 out of 100 don't know it. At what age did St. Teresa set out to reform the monasteries? At 50. And I could quote you a score of other cases. From 20 to 40, women are biologically absorbed, and rightly so. Their concern is with children, with husbands, with lovers, with personal relations. Or they sublimate these things and fling themselves into a career in a female, emotional way. But the natural second blooming is of the mind and spirit and it takes place at middle age. Women take more interest in impersonal things as they grow older. Men's interests grow narrower, women's grow wider. A man of 60 is usually repeating himself like a gramophone record. A woman of 60, if she's got any individuality at all, is an interesting person. We get a line, I won't deny as there's some men as actually prefer their wives to wear the trousers. So again, it's interesting just for this like historical take on gender roles. This interesting little bit as well. Uh, she's got away with her, Miss Sarah has. That you can't deny. I've often noticed how I've not I've often noticed as how there's young ladies who leave their things about, expect everything mended for them, run you off your feet clearing up after them, and yet there's nothing you won't do for them. There's others as gives no trouble at all. Everything neat, no extra work made, and yet there you are. You don't seem to fancy them in the same way. Say what you like, it's an unjust world. Only a crazy politician would talk about fair shares for all. Some has the kicks and some has the hapence, and that's the way it is. We have a little bit of casual racism here. Uh, although, to be fair, this guy's annoyed at his uncle because he's been off in the army, and his uncle says, you've had a long spell of playing about, now we'll see if you can get down to it in earnest. Playing it about, playing about, that's what the fat so-and-so calls active service in the army. My word, I'd like to see him sniped out by a yellow Chinese red soldier. These rich bleeders sitting on their asses in their offices, never thinking of anything but money. Uh, Dame Laura says, it's always easier to tell someone how to make a cake than to do it for yourself. It's also much more enjoyable. Bad for the character though. I'm well aware that I get more odious every day. This bit made me chuckle just because of the older meaning of the word gay. He had been a gay young man and had, had plenty of experience with girls. And then uh, Richard and Sarah, basically Sarah's the daughter, Richard's the potential husband. And he eventually like sets up an ultimatum saying, look, it's her or me. Um, because Sarah's deliberately trying to get rid of him. And we have this, uh, Sarah opened her bag and studied her face carefully. She began to touch it up, repainting her lips, applying eyebrow pencil. She'd really made up her face some time ago. Her actions now were calculated to annoy Richard. She knew that he had a queer old fashioned dislike of seeing a woman make up her face in public. There were all terrible people in this basically. I like this as well. I shouldn't worry. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, they say. But my Aunt Jane used to add on to that of somebody else. I wonder if her Aunt Jane is Jane Marple. We get this little conversation. Uh, I was reading an article of yours only yesterday in the commentator. Oh yes, said Dame Laura, on the stability of marriage. You seem to take it for granted that stability in marriage was to be desired. But to my mind, it is the impermanence of marriage nowadays which constitutes its greatest charm. And so we get, move on to many years later and Richard Caulfield, Caulfield pops round and the daughter forgets who he is. And the mother's like super annoyed. She's like, you made me leave this man who I loved and you don't even remember his name. We get a reference to Paul Robeson singing, sometimes I feel like a motherless child, which is a banging tune. And then later on that page, well, basically we get this. Sarah had put a record on the gramophone and was listening with a melancholy enjoyment to Paul Robeson singing, sometimes I feel like a motherless child. 
the tunes you like, said Edith. Gives me the willy. Gives me the willies, that does. I think it's lovely. No accounting for tastes, Edith grunted crossly, as she observed. Why can't people keep their cigarette ash in ashtrays, flicking it all over the place? It's good for the carpet. That's always been said, and it's no truer now than it ever was. I can't see why it would be good for the carpet, unless it's, the theory is that it burned, and, I don't know, like the little ants and flies and shit, I don't know. We get, uh, as she's getting older, the main character, and she says, but it's also absurd. I've never been a nervy woman, Laura. You know I haven't. I never know what nerves are. And uh, Laura replies, it's all very well to say you've never been a nervy woman. After all, a man who has a broken leg has very likely never had a broken leg before. <laughs> and then Sarah says that her mother's gone a bit gay, that's all. Then we get someone quoting, uh, Remember the saying, a son's a son till he gets him a wife, but a daughter's a daughter all your life. Which is where the book gets its title from. So yeah, all in all, I mean, it is the, the plot line itself isn't something I necessarily would be interested in. And uh, the three like, main characters were just all awful people. I mean, I guess it's kind of a spin on the love triangle trope, if that's your sort of thing. But overall, I did enjoy it just as like a contemporary read to kind of study some of the attitudes that were around at the time. And Christy has some great lines in it as well. So even just from a, an author writing point of view, it was good to read this one. So overall, I gave A Daughter's a Daughter by Agatha Christie, writing as Mary Westmacott, 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of A Daughter's a Daughter by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.